Hello, and welcome to the online worship services for Ion Creek United Methodist Church, Mount Plains United Methodist Church, and Fancy Gap United Methodist Church. If you'll join with me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely day that is Resurrection Day. And I pray that today, most of all, we remember everything that you've done for us and that we remember to share the joy of this moment of this morning. And I pray that even in the moments of joy and the moments of grief, that is Easter, that we remember you are there always in your glorious, lovely son's name we pray. Amen. The scripture for today comes from John 20, 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We today often think of Easter as a happy day, as a day when we are given the fulfillment of the greatest gift of all. But the fact is that in the early hours of the morning, it was one of the hardest days the disciples ever knew. They were still grieving the loss of their best friend and their teacher, Rabuni, as Mary called him. 
They were grieving a deeply painful loss. This is especially evident in the moments when we hear of Mary's weeping. But as the sun rose that morning, they began to realize that things were not what they had imagined them to be. Many in our community knew my father. What they often don't recall is that he passed away in the afternoon on Easter Sunday. As a result, I have always felt the grief of Good Friday more than the joy of the Resurrection Day. Over the past few weeks, you may have noticed I included the grief of the season of Lent. This was intentional. Unlike the Advent season when we travel to the joyful direction of Jesus' birth, this season we all know what is coming is his death. This is life. Seasons of joy and seasons of grief. Today I want to focus on the joy of the resurrection, but I also believe in the importance of acknowledging the grief of Jesus' followers. We all know the story. In the early hours of the morning, the female followers of Jesus journeyed to the tomb. In John, it is Mary Magdalene. The other Gospels vary slightly, but always included is Mary. Luke tells us their reason for traveling to the tomb is to take spices with them to spread around his body. In all the Gospels, they arrive at the tomb only to discover that he is not there. The Gospels as a whole agree that they were perplexed by what had happened. I think we would have been too. Every gospel, an angel appears to them, offering both comfort and explanation. For in that moment, comfort was what they needed. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Luke 24, 5 and 6. In that moment, the women began to understand. They remembered the words that he spoke to them. Then a moment that I have always found amazing happens. They know that this news is not for them alone, but for everyone. In their joy, they race back to the other disciples to tell them. That moment was one of, if not the first sharing of the good news of Jesus. He was gone. But, as he promised, he did rise again. But the men didn't believe them. In every gospel but Mark, we see their reaction. We see their disbelief. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Luke 24. Peter and another disciple ran to the tomb, and John also still in disbelief. The moment of the resurrection to the disciples seemed so impossible, so improbable that they dared not believe it. After the moment on the cross, they might be wondering how dare they hope? How dare they feel happy? How dare they believe that such a wondrous thing could happen? All hope 
was lost. The veil in the temple was torn. How? How could they dare to hope? How could they have faith after what had happened? In our lives, we will all face moments of darkness, moments of loss. There will be moments in our lives that, quite frankly, we might not want to get out of bed each morning. But those days don't stay those days forever. Hope not only is coming, but it already has come. That is what the Easter story is about. It is about hope. Hope that even on our darkest day, the sun will still come up over the valley and our world will become bright again. The day of Good Friday was a dark day. Arguably one of the darkest days our world has ever known. But if we don't have Good Friday, we never would have had resurrection Sunday. I have lost more family members during the Easter season than any other time in the year. So I can say with absolute honesty that Easter is hard. But I am reminded every year of hope. Of all of my family to have passed during this season, I am given hope because each and every one of them came to know Jesus long before they passed away. That day outside the tomb, Mary wept. Then the angels came and asked her why she did so. They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him, was her answer. I suspect, but can't prove, that answer was only part of it. Then Jesus himself appeared, but she did not recognize him at first. But when she did his response, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary, of course, went to, went to the disciples and told them what had happened yet again. That is the point of the resurrection story. In each and every gospel, there is a common thread of our orders to go and tell. I can tell you that I have peace and I have joy at the memory of my family members who have passed on because someone at some point listened to those orders. Go and tell. Go and tell the people what has happened this day. Go and tell them that the Lord has risen. He is not here. The tomb is empty. Today I ask you to look back. Look into your past. Who told you the story of the resurrection? Was it your parents? A teacher? A friend? In my father's case, I suspect he first heard it told by a pastor who had come to their small church in Duxbury every few weeks. For me, it was my parents. I also ask you this. When was the last time you shared the story of the resurrection? Did you tell it to a friend, a child? A stranger. On this joyful, joyful day, 
I hope that you can answer those questions, not to me or to anyone else, but for yourself. Because at the end of the day, how can you not feel the love and the joy of what happened so many years ago? If you'll join me in a prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And in that moment of grief on that day, we were given hope. Hope and joy in your Son. And I pray that everyone can come to know that joy in their lives. Because that joy is so overwhelming and loving and caring. On this Easter Sunday, I thank you for everything that you do for us, both in the past and in the future. And I thank you so much for your Son, for in him lies hope and joy and love. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.